Okay, let's work some example problems with quantized light. First off, it takes 13.6 electron volts to ionize a hydrogen atom in the ground state. What is the wavelength of a photon with just enough energy to do this? All right, how do we work this? Well, we say that the energy of a photon is just equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. All right, we want to know the wavelength, and we can write the frequency as just C over the wavelength, so there we go. So it's just H times C over the wavelength. All right, now, um, I know the energy, that's 13.6 electron volts, I just need to solve for the wavelength. So the wavelength is going to be H C over the energy of my photon. All right, um, we have one problem, the energy is given to us in electron volts. Uh, ba -ba. Yeah. So if I want to plug Planck's constant and C in and SI units, I need to convert this to joules, all right? Or alternatively, it turns out that uh, since I do equations like this all the time in my research, I happen to know that you can write Planck's constant times the speed of light as 1, 2, 3, 9.8 electron volt nanometers, all right? Okay, that's kind of a cheat. Maybe you won't remember that, in which case you just need to remember how to convert electron volts to joules, and then you can plug everything in and, and get it. But I'm going to be lazy, and you can be lazy too if you remember that H times C is 1, 2, 3, 9.8 electron volt nanometers. And then this is just 13.6 electron volts, and the electron volts cancel, and we are left with the wavelength to ionize hydrogen Python and we'll say 1, 2, 3, 9.8 divided by 13.6, that gives us 91.2 nanometers. All right, there you go. 91.2 nanometers, and that's well short of visible light. There you go. Okay, next problem, photoelectric effect. An oxide-free aluminum surface has a work function of 4.08 electron volts. Why electron volts? Why, why not joules? Well, because this would be really, really tiny in joules, and we're dealing with electrons, and when I measure the velocity of an electron, I'd probably do it by deflecting it with a plate that I charge up with volts. So electron volts are kind of a natural unit for these kinds of experiments. So an oxide-free aluminum surface has a work function of 4.08 electron volts. If I shine light with a wavelength of 200 nanometers onto an aluminum surface, how fast will the liberated electrons be traveling? All right, so here we are. Um, the kinetic energy is just the energy of my photon minus the work function, all right? And the energy of my photon is hc over lambda, right? hf, which is hc over lambda. And my, then I've got my work function, right? And remember, hc is 1, 2, 3, 9.8 nanometer electron volts divided by my wavelength is 200 nanometers minus my work function, which is 4.08 electron volts. All right, so I can easily get the kinetic energy. All right, the kinetic energy is 1, 2, 3, 9.8 nanometer electron volts divided by 200, and then I subtract off the work function, which is 4.08 electron volts, and it looks like my uh, electrons will have 2.0 one one eight nine 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 so um two point what was it again one one to lots of digits this just becomes two point one one nine electron volts all right now i just need to figure out how fast the electrons are moving right and so from that i say the kinetic energy of my electrons is this going to be relativistic or not? Do I have to use relativistic kinetic energy? Well, one way to know how relativistic something is is to compare the rest energy to its kinetic energy. If the rest energy is huge compared to the kinetic energy, then you can ignore relativity. Electrons have a rest energy of about half a million electron volts. So two electron volts is pretty small compared to that. So let's just go ahead and use classical physics, which says the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, all right? You could use the relativistic formula. It would be harder, presumably. I mean, if you did it right, you should get the same answer, all right? So the velocity is just going to be equal to um, 
2 over m times the kinetic energy and then take the square root of that. All right. Now once again to get this we need to remember how to convert electron volts to joules if we want to put everything in joules. Alternatively I could write this as 2 times the kinetic energy times well the rest energy of an electron is mc squared, squared right? So that means the mass of my electron is just, sorry about the weird th things that my, my tablet's putting weird little things at the end of some of my lines. Sorry about that, I uh, hope it's not too hard to read. But this is my rest energy, which means I can write the mass as the rest energy divided by c squared. So another option is I could come along and I could say, oh, well instead of mass, I'm gonna write the rest energy divided by c squared, all right? And then I could find my velocity. So one way is just convert your kinetic energy into joules, put everything, get your mass in kilograms, everything's in SI units, and you can get your velocity. Um, I started working this and then realized, you know, hey, why not show you some other fun ways to do this just to confuse you even more. But if I do it this way, I can say that my velocity is just the square root of 2 times my kinetic energy, and I'm going to put my kinetic energy in electron volts, 2.119 times 2.119 electron volts. And remember, there was this like 0.89999, so I really would have kept for an intermediate result, I like to keep lots of digits, but this is effectively keeping lots of digits because, yeah, you round way out here and you get this. All right? And then I'm going to multiply by c squared, so the c squared I'm just going to pull out of here. And then I happen to remember that the rest energy of uh, an electron is 0 0.511 times 10 to the 6 electron volts, all right? And probably when I take my square root, I worry about maybe not having three significant digits in my solution, so I probably should have put more in there, but I started working this and realized I didn't remember this to more than three significant digits. But either way, either convert this to joules, plug it in, get your answer, or remember more digits of this, remember what C is, and find out how fast it's going. All right? Okay, last problem. Compton effect. I shine x-rays with a wavelength of 0.1 nanometers at a piece of metal. Wait, this sounds like photoelectric effect, doesn't it? Because photoelectric effect, we hit metal. Only here, I'm measuring the x-rays that scatter off. So I'm not looking at electrons that came out when the photon gave all their energy to the electron. I'm looking at the photons that came out because the electrons didn't absorb all of the energy. And in fact, the fact that I'm using x-rays means that the work function is going to be really small compared to the energy of my photon, all right? So it's almost like the matter's not there. This is just the electrons are almost free, right, compared to the energy of the uh, x-rays. So this is a Compton effect problem. I'm basically scattering an x-ray off of an electron and looking at how the wavelength changed. If I measure the x-rays that scatter at an angle of 90 degrees from the incoming rays, what will their wavelength be? Well, we have an equation for the Compton effect, all right? There it is. Lambda final minus a lambda initial is this. So the lambda final minus lambda, in, sorry, lambda initial is just going to be equal to h, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds divided by the mass of my electron, which is right here, 9.10938 times 10 to the minus 31, and that should have, should have written kilograms there, kilograms, times the speed of light, which is 2.9979 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then I'm gonna multiply that by one minus the cosine of, and we said it's 90 degrees, right? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? It's zero. So. Now I just plug this into my calculator and uh, I'm gonna get, so it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times one and then divided by 9.10938 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times 2.9979 times 10 to the eight meters per second and I get 2.426 times 10 to the minus 12. So 2.426 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, and what are my units? So joules is, so I've got joules, which is kilograms, meters squared per second squared. I always check my units, right? 
multiplied by seconds. And wow, this pen is doing really goofy things. Sorry about that. And then down in the bottom, I've got kilograms and meters per second. All right, so the kilograms cancel. The meters down here cancels with the meter squared. And this second and this one cancel those seconds squared. So if you can actually read the handwriting with the little flourish that my pen wants to put on today, you'll know that's actually meters. So this is meters. All right, so I started with light at 0.1 nanometers. And I wanted to know what the new wavelength would be. So the final wavelength is going to be, the final minus the initial is this, right? So the wavelength gets a little bit longer by this amount. So the final wavelength is going to be my 0.1 nanometers plus this, 10 to the minus 12. Well, I subtract 9 from that. And that's going to be 10 to the minus uh, 3, right? So this is going to be plus uh, 2.426 times 10 to the minus 3 nanometers. So this is going to be 0 0.10. Um, let's see. So 10 to the minus 3 is going to put it right here. 2.426 nanometers. OK, did I do that right? OK, I think I did that right. But before I actually submit it to uh, the computer on my homework, I'm going to double check my calculation and make sure that in my head I didn't move decimal places in weird ways. All right. And there we're done.